You know, there are several things in our culture that we say that are actually not based upon reality, but is based upon a myth, or rather, is based upon a wish, or rather, it's based upon a misconception or misperception of reality. So, what am I talking about? In our culture, don't know if it's in your culture, this is what we say. We always say, what is for a man, he will get. And that's actually a myth, you know. Because when we keep repeating it, it makes us believe that all that is possibly for us will naturally come to us. But that is not the case. Reality actually proves otherwise. And so we will realize through people's life experience or even looking at sacred scripture that that is not the case. The very thing that is for you, the very thing that is that, that belongs to you, you will realize that you have to fight for it. You will realize that you have to defend it. Take, for example, the children of Israel. The children of Israel were promised the land of Canaan by God because it was God's land. And he gave it to the people, but it was his to give because he created the earth. Therefore, God is the ultimate land owner. And so this land is his. This is why. Scripture says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Furthermore, the life that you have, the air that you breathe, the breath of life that is in your body, that actually belongs to God. Because Scripture says, all souls are mine. And we are only alive because of God. So therefore, this land belongs to God. Our lives belong to God. And so therefore God promised the children of Israel through their progenitor Abraham that he is going to give Abraham's seed the land of Canaan. That is to be their land. And so that was their natural inheritance by God. But they're still had to go to the land of Canaan and fight for what was rightfully theirs. So here we have a perfect example that we still have to fight for what is rightfully ours. So therefore then, things like this cause me to adjust my belief system to understand that even though something is for me, I still have to put the effort in it. And this is why I say in our cultures, we say some things that are myths. What is for a man, he is going to get. Not always the case. That means, sometimes we go away with a faulty understanding thinking that it would naturally come to us in a very easy fashion. No, beloved. We have to fight for it. And let me here stick a pin. Because God owns the land and because God owns our life. Because many people accuse God of genocide. But genocide is when you murder people. And God says, thou shalt do no murder. But because the life already belongs to God, God is simply taking back what belongs to him. Because we are not valuing what we have. So God cannot be guilty of genocide. However, if some person wants to interpret it that way, they are actually free to do so. Now, back to the point. There are things that belong to you. There are things that belong to your life. There are things that belong to your peace. There are things that belong to your progress. There are things that belong to your development. 
and they are there for you, but you would never be able to receive it unless you go and take it. And this is why Jesus said, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. And knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. Because there are blessings for us as Christians to receive, but we will never receive those blessings if we do not ask for them, if we do not knock for them, and if we do not seek for them. So here now, there is a dichotomy between belief systems. There is a conflict because you have two opposing thoughts juxtaposed right next to each other where we say things culturally or we live things culturally, but absolute truth, which defines all reality, which is the word of God, is telling us, no, it is not so. So what is for a person they will get? No. We get what we take. We get what we put forth the effort to receive. So the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is available to you in your life. And this is why scripture says that Jesus said that the Father is willing to give his children his spirit more than earthly fathers are willing to give their children good gifts. So the blessing of the Spirit of God, the fullest outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our life to do the mighty works of God are available for us and we do not possess it. Why is it because it is not for us? Is it because that Christ doesn't want us to have his spirit? No. It's because we didn't ask. It's because we didn't knock. It's because we didn't seek. So the blessing is right there and we are not appropriating the blessing to ourselves. We are not exercising the effort that is necessary to put ourselves in a position to receive the blessing. Because the blessing comes not simply because we act, but because we put ourselves in a position to receive. Because remember, new wine cannot be poured into old skins. The vessel must be prepared to receive the blessing. So the blessing of the Holy Spirit is there for us to receive. It is for us, but will we get it simply because that blessing is for us? No effort. The blessing of a better and a higher quality of life is there for you in the everyday experiences of life, in your day-to-day -day living. The blessing is there. But if you do not educate yourself and use your mental capacity to increase your skills, your talents, your gifts, that would concomitantly increase your income and resources that are available to you, your standard of living will never change. But that blessing is there for you. So you have to quit. We have to quit waiting on lightning to strike from heaven to tell us what to do when God has already blessed us with the capacity to think. So you determine the blessings that will exist in your life, beloved. That's your determination. You determine. And, and, and here it is, beloved. All of us can have a spiritual, a religious experience akin to the disciples. All of us can experience the things that we've read about in the Old and in the New Testament. But we don't experience it because we don't want it. Because we may speak of it, but we don't put in the effort to receive it. And this is why Christ said, you receive not 
because he asked not. And then when you ask, you are asking for things to consume upon your own lust. And so here we have God in our experience who says he can do all things. Here we have the creator of the very fabric of reality who is on our side. He is in our corner. He is our vocative. He is our support system. And yet still we receive so very little from him because we mistakenly think that what is for a man he will get. What is for me is always going to come to me. It is always going to come to you providing you put in the effort to receive it because God doesn't work magic. He is not a genie in the bottle that you have to rub the right way. But even the genie in the bottle required some form of effort. So where is our effort, beloved? Effort. We have to put in effort to receive the blessing. So the gift of salvation has already been given us. We have to put in the effort to maintain our salvation and to receive all of the benefits of it. Do you know that? You, do you know that, beloved? We can receive... Look, I don't know about you, but I want to receive all that God has in store for me. All of his blessings, all of his spirit, all of his experience. We have to, we cannot exhaust the resources of God. And this challenges us to a different experience with Christ. When we understand what we have in our religious experience, what we have in our daily life is based upon the effort that we are willing to to expend in receiving it. This challenges us because it, it causes us to recognize that our reality, however it is, or however it turns out, is our own personal responsibility. So if we want changes in our daily reality and in our spiritual experience, change is only going to come based upon our initial and continued effort. It lies at your door. Blessings and peace.